animated movies aren't what they used to be. I mean, when was the last big animated movie that did enormous in the box office that isn't an already existing IP, nor is it a sequel, like an legitimate original animated film? That's right, you can't. I mean, you got Red Panda, Soul, which was actually good, Wish, Onward. Funny enough, most of these have $150 million just thrown at them and barely cracking the even spectrum. Well, that is a shame. Yes, a, sh a shame. That is exactly how I would put it. Studios are losing money. <laughs> they need a hit. So what do they turn to? Using a beloved established IP and doing the worst 90% of the time and turning it into a live action remake. Because why not? Well, Notorious, from a business standpoint, if the original ideas are failing, what choice do they have? Well, thanks for that question. And the answer I have for you is market the movie fucking better. That always should be the first step. Disney or any other studio either barely market or make the most boring marketing scheme. And with Disney, you see how I keep pointing at one singular company? The Big Mouse, they just suck at marketing. And on top of that, their films, at least most, lack substance. And characters we really can't relate or care for because they simply can't creatively create an envisionary world with unique designs, with life lessons we can all comprehend. Whether you're an adult or a kid, newer films just don't have this anymore. Or at least most don't. Seems like studios want to separate their storytelling to two narratives. Narratives. The beloved animation from the 80s and 90s? While well, they view those films predominantly towards children. While well, they've convinced themselves that live action, also ignoring money, is the big lottery win with this. Hello, I like money. They're able to cater to us adults. Failing to realize many of us still love those original classics. Remember Coco? An original animated Disney film making over 800 millions of dollars? Yes, it's made in 2017. But being one of the best animated films in the last 10 years, teaching all of us the meaning of family, friendship, and the importance of perseverance to achieving greatness. Then there is Milan. Uh, do I really need to explain any more with that movie? How about fuck you? I'll give two great examples of when films work better in animation than live action. Yes. Oh boy, one of them, they've tried twice. Ah, the glorious 2019. What a wonderful time. A big year for massive conclusion to big stories, some bad, some good. And then there was the infamous remake of... Man, I remember being excited. You know I enjoyed Beauty and the Beast remake, so they can't possibly screw up. They screwed it up. And yet the emotionless wreck received a whopping $1.6 million versus the $980 million the original made. Obviously, the name Lion King sold the idea. Many, including myself, had to fire to go watch it. And well, that's the last time I'll ever trust a Disney remake. Don't get me wrong, the effects were exhilarating, but visual and music can get you so far when the heart and soul of the movie isn't present. And that's just putting in a lighter feel. I mean, I should have seen it coming. They're using realistic figures of lines, which would diminish any emotion certain scenes held. Like, I can't tell if the lion is happy or it simply wants to rip me up for a big lunch. A great example of the lack of soul in a scene when Mufasa is getting trampled by a bunch of wildebeests. The three have no expression, simply by the emotion Scar is about to commit a truly evil act. But the stale look doesn't justify the impact of his character nor scene. Scar, help me. You suck. You can't make it up, it just doesn't work. Yeah, sure, the music and cinematography was outstanding. I mean, it's Hans Zimmer, come on. But my guy, seeing Simba react the way he did when Mufasa died, never seen a more emotionless scene. Like, it really did suck. I mean, just look at the comparison. Can't tell if he's happy or sad. I mean, obviously, he's sad. Just saying realistic lines don't work best for these type of moments. Sure, you can argue that it is a live action. It's not going to hit the same like it did with the original. But what about changing scenes? You know, you weren't getting the one-to-one -one skill. But according to Lion King, a mega dance number. You know, Scar having the big parade standing on that big rock. Just watching a bunch of hyenas just marching. Him giving a big speech in the form of music of his motivation to assassinate his brother for the throne. But yeah, okay, the controversy surely changed things because it showed a political symbolism. Despite being a terrible line in the flesh and the heart, but okay, it's fine, let's switch things. So prepare for the coup of the century. So prepare for the coup of the century. Fuck. 
at least make it have the same feel, not Scar doing whatever the fuck he was doing. The movie simply felt like while Hulk Hogan fell when Andre Giant ripped his shirt. The heart and soul out of all the little monsters, man. Let's talk about a more recent show. A remake that's based off my favorite childhood show. Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. We had a remake before, but that's something we, we don't talk about. After Mr. M. Night completely crippled the chance of another live action Avatar, 14 years later, Netflix decided, hey, we're increasing the prices for our streaming service. But we made too many completely dog shit originals. We need to bring the people back in. Hey man, I'll just say this not as bad as End Nights. At least it didn't take 10 Earthbenders to throw one rock. But the show suffers from a short season, moments where the acting becomes stale, changing storylines again because of the time and age, which was completely blown out of proportion. You know, not getting the concept of what an arc is, but okay, I guess. Just a guy with a boomerang. I mean, it's not hard to understand what made the original great. Yeah, sure, you can argue filler episodes not being in the live action show doesn't change how the characters develop and the payoffs they go through, but the animated version was different. The filler episodes were crucial in a way they focused on the strengths and weaknesses of each character. Such as Aang, Bernie Katara was set in stone on his perception he carried that all fire is just simply destruction and pain. You know how the Fire Nation are the semblance of destruction in this very war. That's rough, buddy. Now, due to the lack of episodes, you have three arcs crammed into two episodes, which shits on the pacing and directional focus. The Jack King Boomy, the traitor arc was all done in the same place. I mean, the traitor wasn't even in Omashu. He was all the way in the Northern Air Temple. You know, the trauma of seeing his people's monuments desecrated for the sake of building a factory of weapons. This defeats the entire purpose of what mattered in those arcs that made them great. Jet being a rebel who's been broken for what the Fire Nation has done to his family and isn't taking any mercy nor doesn't care for collateral damage. The show misses the point of developing his character because the episodes focus on 50 different storylines, which you fail to focus on what the hell is going on. It already sucks the characters have degraded to less complex such as Aang going for the swing of saving the world and limiting the struggle of wanting to be a kid at the same time. You know, crucial moments and elements to this character and progression which allows for him to mature throughout each season. But no live action show rids 80% of it. If you're making a notable change but aren't adding anything, what's the f***ing point? You already ruined the build up of Ozai whose plan isn't complex but basic so his impact is essentially crafted as the animation where we saw his role on this world through his children and the world's perception of him. But no, it seems like the creators saw the good doctor memes and they were like, we need to use Daniel Day Kim a whole lot. No, that's a lot of damage! To draw more attention to the show. Smart business move, but a fuck you to the animation what made it good. Simply creatively destroyed what made the big villain good. Even the epic moments feel unearned and boring with the lack of, for a better word, epic feel. I mean, just look at this comparison. Just saying, they can't master the fishy scene. Wonder what they'll cook with this absolute gem. Oh, fuck yeah, this is the shit. Animation to live action is a new trend that simply needs to stop. Market your new animated originals better. Stop alienating an entire fan base to cater to children and maybe he will make some more money. Just saying. Puss in Boots, Last Wish, achieved this, made tons of money, and was seen as a successor to its original, giving us issues and problems we can relate to. Fear of death, anxiety, trust, lessons of what family truly is. So I won't be colored surprised for corporate ever decides to make a live action version of this film with real cats and boots swinging away against a giant wolf. Cause god forbid we make something original in Hollywood nowadays. 2000s strived with animation after animation and animation being a hit after year after year and year and year and year and so on. Incredibles, Toy Story, Kung Fu Panda, Ice Age, the list can go on and on and with so much potential and utilizing these tools to spoil yourself creating a visually telling story. Something that isn't all achievable in a live action. I will say this, if I ever was to be a director, I would rather miss 
just my original idea than to desecrate what's been already made by the original creator for your own profit. Disgusting! I just view it as scummy. Bit of rant, so excuse the aggressive tone at points, but yeah, that's it for me, so yeah, see ya.